Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Okay, so Hank, tell me a little bit about what you do here in Gainesville. I work in Gainesville. I work with Big Daddy Guns, Big Daddy Enterprises. We have lots of different businesses that we do. So I work with those guys kind of like, um, I'm going to say from about 11 all the way up to the evening because I, I work in the studios. We're developing things there and then I actually do my podcast, my live podcast that starts out on YouTube from the studios. Okay. And so how many hours would you say that you devote yourself to your podcast versus what you do at Big Daddy Studios? Um, the podcast itself is two hours long and there's maybe an hour in front of that where we prep and think about what we're going to talk about that day and maybe another hour after that where we try to wrap up everything that we just did or just happened. So you were asking about guns and technology. I think that there's a huge difference between the guns themselves and technology. So what I mean by that, we're talking about really old um, engineering when it comes to guns. But I don't think technology plays a huge part in it. And personally, I don't want it to. Obviously, you have things like uh, you know, you see these guns that are supposed to have fingerprint scanners and you know other kinds of biometrics. I don't really care for that because I don't think it's reliable. But on the flip side of that, what I do, you know, what I do in terms of having a YouTube channel, technology has completely changed everything because I have my own basically TV station, you know, my own broadcaster. So I don't have to wait for people to come along and discover me and decide they're going to publish my story. I could just go out there and make it myself. And, uh, you know, technology, the internet, the availability of cameras and, and prices and things like that, I think that's completely changed the game where guys like me could come along and, you know, every month on my channel, there's about, I have about 300,000 views of what I do, you know, just on my YouTube channel. And then I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all those kinds of things. So uh, 10 years ago, even, you really didn't have that. Another question that I have is, what do you know about guns? I think I have a, a good understanding of how to be safe with firearms. And I think I also know what I like, you know, and what I, what I would personally use to uh, defend myself every day. And, you know, if things were, let's say, to go sideways, um, I know what I would use in, in that case or what I would prefer to use. But I don't, un I don't feel like I fully understand exactly how guns are designed and engineered and all the different things out there. Just because, you know, firearms have been around for hundreds of years. So it's impossible for me to know about, you know, this gun that came out in 1932, etc. You know, know about all the calibers and things like that. And it makes it fun for me because I don't know everything. Because I'm, I'm getting to discover and explore and learn things. Video games, music. All the other forms of art that we have, movies, all those kinds of things, those are created by human beings. And we, we, we make these things, we put it out there in the world, and other people consume it. They live vicariously through it. So we all play video games to some extent. I went to my local gun store, uh, which is the Bullet Trap here in Plano. It's one of the few indoor gun ranges in the city. I walk in, lots of guns on display, including the Chris Vector, like the one back there behind you. And it actually had the same suppressor on it and there was a giant sign on the wall that says, suppressors are legal, we'll help you with the paperwork, just ask. But right. the purpose behind that is obviously killing people. Help you. Let me help you out here. Okay, so let me help you out here. And the thing that I would tell you about suppressors and the idea that they're for killing people, that's not really true. I mean, if that's true, then that means that the mufflers on cars are also for killing people. As I told you before, but we, I watch movies, I listen to music. When things go wrong in society, we always want to look to blame it on something. If that was really true, most of us play video games or watch movies or listen to music that if someone analyzed that music, they would say, oh, this is violent or promotes violence. Is it the fault of that thing that's really just an art form that we're consuming, that we did something? Or is it ultimately our fault that we did something? Obviously, there's a few broken people out there. When you have people that do things like these school shootings and other acts of violence that needlessly or senselessly take place out there, it's someone who's broken. And a person who's broken 
how do we know what it was that influenced them and made them do something? Or all the chain of events that led to that. They were born into the world. People raised them. How do they treat them? How did society treat that person? How did we react to the problems that they had? You know, what were the influences of things around them like drugs, alcohol, music, uh, movies, video games? It's a, it's a whole collection of things and the, the, uh, the idea that we have as human beings that something bad happened, we're going to find this one thing and we're going to blame it on that, I think is crazy, but that's another thing that we do because we're humans, right? All right, guys, uh, we're doing this little behind the scenes. Casey was nice enough to come here and interview me. Casey, do you want to tell the people who you are, what you do? So I'm Casey. I work for WFT News. I'm a student journalist at the University of Florida. Um, so I'm just here, and I interviewed Hank Strange about his opinions in regards to guns and technology and the rela relationship between the two. So Yeah, and it was awesome. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, I look for when, when is uh, when's, when are we going to see the end result of what you're doing? So here? I'm working on it over the next couple of weeks. Um, I should have it done in the next three. So in the next three I'll weeks? I'll let you know when it Awesome. And this is going to be, your, your thing's going to be on the radio? Yes, it's going to okay. be on the radio. What station? It's going to be on 89.1. 89.1. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming by and interviewing me, taking interest in what I do. I appreciate it. And hanging out with us here in the barbershop, dealing with all the sounds and everything like that. <laughs> Thank you, know. you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Casey. Thank you. All right, guys.